Hey everybody, what's up? It's Ryan Groose from The Loop Loft, and I'm back for another video tutorial um, on our multi-track drum sessions. And today's video tutorial is all about mixing, trying to get a uh, good drum mix rather quickly um, and easily. Um, and for uh, today's video, we're looking at our latest release entitled uh, Lucky Sevens. Uh, it's a session uh, recorded entirely in 7-8, um, as you'll see, before you bring these sessions into your DAW, it's um, very important here to have, depending on what software you're using, I'm using Logic, so it's at the bottom, um, your time signature set to 7-8. Um, and most programs will auto-detect the tempo, but if it doesn't, um, the session is at 115 BPM. Uh, so that's important to have uh, in place, just so everything lines up on the grid. Um, so the tracks I brought in were from the uh, song starter demo that I provide in every kit. And it's basically a prearranged um, version of that I've created um, that takes some verse elements and some chorus elements and fills and the percussion and kind of brings it all together for you so you can um, really just quickly get started um, if you don't want to piece together everything individually from the, uh, the various folders. So. Um, that's what we're looking at, and I looped a certain section um, towards the end of the of the song that kind of has a little bit of everything. There's the entire kit is playing a groove, um, all the percussion elements, I believe, except for one of the shakers, is playing, and I'll just kind of run through my process that I go through when I'm mixing. Um, and the first thing you want to do, obviously, load the tracks. Everything is going to be at zero dB on the faders because you haven't touched anything yet, and it's going to be out of whack. It's going to be loud. Um, your output is more than not going to uh, be in the red. So let's just give it a listen. <laughs> Um, but it's all there, and this is just their starting point. Um, every, obviously, when everything's at zero dB, you're going to be uh, um, pushing the output really hard. So what I like to do is just kind of go through track by track and listen to what's going on, just to get my head around um, the session and what I'm working with. So let's go by soloing each track and listen to it quickly. Here's the kick drum. Sounds good. It's kind of a ringy kick, um, and I might want to get a little more punch and top on the, on the high end attack. Um, but overall, it's a good starting point. Here's the snare drum. Again, it's it's an open ringy sound, but it kind of works uh, in this style of groove. Here's the high tom. Again, I want to add some more attack, I think, and a little compression to bring it out. And I also want to do some gating, because you hear that, you hear the track ringing when it's not being played, and that kind of works its way into your mix and uh, muddies things up. So I'll show you how to gate that in a minute. Floor tom, um, same thing. When you have these mics so close to really resonant drums, you kind of hear that rumble uh, when the drums aren't being struck, just the sympathetic uh, resonation is that a word? Resonance from the kit. Um, the overhead, this is the left overhead mic. Here's the right mic. Um, obviously they're identical mics, they're just capturing different sides of the kit. Um, just a nice, clean, natural, overall sound. Here's the room mic. Nice, big, uh, a warehouse. It's a, it's a larger room so you kind of get that big natural reverb sound that you can work into your mix when you need it. Um, and let's go to some percussion. Egg shaker. Grooving along in seven. Djembe. Uh, like I said, there's no African shaker on this part. Here's the cowbell. And again, these are really loud. Um, tracks are at zero, so we're gonna bring these way down in the mix once we get started. So, okay. We know what's in here now. Um, so once I've listened to everything, I like to start with the overheads. Um, 
and start building my mix from there. So I'll solo the left and right uh, overheads on, on the drum kit and just listen to that. And I don't normally like to do a lot of EQ or compression on these. Um, they usually sound pretty good flat. But you do want to bring the levels down on everything so you can start you know, piecing it together, keeping an eye on the output meter so you're not uh, burying the uh, needle or the meter in the red. Um, and now you want to do some panning. So there's a few schools of thought on this. Um, I'm a drummer, so I, I like to hear things as a drummer um, would hear it, even though that's pretty selfish. Um, but if you're watching a left-hand drummer from the stage or from the crowd, like Phil Collins, it would be like this. So whatever. Um, I like to pan overhead left to the left, overhead right to the right. Um, right now I've got it, you know, 30 minus 30 plus on either side. Um, you can go more extreme. Um, but again, it all depends. It's all subjective. It all depends on your track and what kind of vibe you're going for and how wide you want the stereo width. Um, but right now we'll keep it at 30. And that's kind of a nice, uh, nice overall view of the kit. And then from there, I like to go to the, the kick drum. Solo that. And again, you're going to want to bring the level way down. And now we're going to start uh, tweaking the EQ a bit. And with these drums in Logic, I actually really like to start with some of the presets in Logic. Um, they're a good starting point uh, for mixing drums. Um, and then just tweaking those just a little bit further. And on these smaller jazz kicks that we used on uh, this session, um, I believe it's this floor tom, is actually a really nice EQ. Um, it's a little toppy, so I tend to want to bring that down just a hair. But it beefs things up uh, quite a bit, especially around the 100 hertz area. Um, gives it that nice. Uh, Thuddy punch. Thuddy punch. Um, and then after the EQ, I like to add a little compression. So I'll go to the compressor. And with the kick drum, I typically like uh, just starting with the default um, platinum compressor in Logic and uh, tweaking that a bit. I find that some of the preset kick compressions are uh, just a little too aggressive a lot of the times. Um, for this, I want to shorten the release just a bit and shorten the attack just to get a little more up front. So now we've got the EQ and the compression. Um, now if we listen to it again, you'll notice you're hearing all the bleed through um, of the rest of the kit coming through, which um, is good sometimes, but in this case, I want to really isolate that kick drum uh, on that channel. So I'm going to use a noise gate, um, which acts exactly like it sounds. It's a gate, for those of you who have never used one, um, that basically opens and closes based on a certain threshold. So it lets in sound only when it's loud enough to open the gate. So um, there's the popo. Um, wasn't me. Uh, so I've got the threshold set at 8 dB, negative 8 dB, and it seems to be in a good spot for the uh, kick drum. Now I want to increase the hold time and the release time to kind of get more of a natural uh, gating effect on that. That's a little too long. All right, that's sounding pretty good for now. You can hear how it kind of disappears um, shortly after the initial attack, but you still get a lot of that low end. Uh, you hear the notes of the kick drum and then it gets out of the way quickly. So we're in a good place there with the kick. Now we're gonna go to the snare drum and solo that and add a little EQ. Um, it's, it's got a nice, you know, natural sound as it is, but I'm gonna boost the lows and the highs a bit. So I'm, to do that, I'm going to uh, use another one of the presets here. Um, 
the Rock Snare uh, channel EQ preset. You can hear it's got a little more bite to it now. And like I did with the kick, I'm gonna add a little bit of compression. And shorten the attack just a bit. And with this, I, I, I don't want to turn the gate on because there's so many ghost notes happening on the snare drum. Those, those oops. Ghost notes are those quiet 16th notes that kind of occupy the space in between the backbeat and fill out the groove. And if you turn a gate on um, on those kind of grooves, it you basically lose all the ghost notes and you lose that lilt and that feel that you get. Um, so on these these busier type of uh, syncopated uh, snare snare grooves, I don't like to use gates. Um, it, it just kind of it chops things up way too much. Um, but if we listen to the kick and the snare. Pretty good mix between the two there. And then we'll go over to the tom. And I want to brighten this up just a bit. We'll get a little bit of low end. and a little bit of compression. And now you're hearing hearing that ring that I was talking about earlier. A lot of ghost notes, a lot of resonance from the drum. Um, so here again, we're gonna use a gate um, to close the mic when you're not hitting the drum. You'll hear it's triggering the gate. And for the Tommy, it's got a, a longer resonance on the Tom, so we're gonna stretch this out just a bit. All right, that sounds pretty good. You can hear the, the length of the, of the note, um, the decay, but then it gets out of the way while the rest of the kit is being played. And now we're gonna do the same for the floor Tom. Go to the EQ, and I'm going to try one of these presets, um, floor time EQ, that really brings out the resonance even more. I'll try a different one. That's nice, the medium, and a little bit of compression. And again, the gating. So we're trying to go for a natural decay on this. That's pretty good. So let's bring up the kick, snare, and toms. Now we're gonna to want to pan the toms a little bit too. So like I did with my overheads, I'm gonna pan the uh, high tom to the left a bit. Because as a drummer, that's where I hear it. And the floor tom to the right a bit. I bring out the little stereo width. So we're in a pretty good place there. So now I'm gonna mix in the overheads as well. And this is where we should really start to get a nice overall view of the kit. And keeping an eye on our output meter so we're not, again, you know, burying it in the red. We still have more tracks to add in. Sounds good. It's more crisp and defined than it was before with the EQ and the compression and the uh, noise gates. The gates take out a lot of the, uh, the, the extra resonance that we heard before. Cool. So I'm gonna unsolo these. Um, 
And then the room mics. Let's listen to that. And that sounds pretty good. Sometimes, as an effect, you can add a really aggressive uh, compressor on there. Um, but for this, there's kind of a lot of notes in this. Uh, if it was more of a straight ahead pop thing, uh, I might go that direction. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it totally flat and natural. And let's hear how it sounds with the rest of the kit. get that bigger natural reverb just by bringing up the room sound or a really you know, much more dry sound by taking it out. So it's, it's almost like an insert effect um, that you can use to add some color and size to the drum sound. Which I'll get to inserts in just a second. Um, and now we're gonna do the percussion section. Um, when we first listened to this, the levels were really hot because um, again, the faders are at zero. Um, so we're gonna bring these down and solo each of them and bring it all together here. And with these, I don't like to add any compression really. Um, that gets taken care of uh, in the master bus, or if, if you do a, you know, a drum, entire drum insert. But on the tracks themselves, uh, I try not to color them too much with uh, compression and EQ. But I do like to pan them. So I'm gonna bring Egg Shaker over to the left. This is our friend the djembe. Let's put him over just a little off center on the right. Cowbell. And bring it a little further right. And there's no African shaker. And then this crash is an overdub crash um, that comes included in the pack. There's a bunch of uh, overdubs that we now include um, of various crash symbols. So you, if it's not in the groove, you can easily just drop it in on the track, which in this case, we kind of put it on the one of this phrase. So there you hear it. And I'm gonna pan that crash over to the left just a bit. Cool. So our percussion's happening. It's not killing the meter. And let's hear what it sounds like all together. So now I'm going to uh, set up some inserts, um, which is basically just a way to route the audio signal from every track onto a separate fader strip, control strip, where you can, um, as, as a unit, apply reverb or compression or delay um, before going to the output. So um, instead of individually putting reverb, reverb on every track, you can kind of uh, do it all together in one um, cohesive uh, unit. So. To set that up, uh, you go to the sends and select bus one, um, and then you need to bring the level up on that. And I usually just bring them up to zero, and at this point I'll cut forward in post-production and bring you to um, everything queued up. Okay, cool. So now I've got all my sends set up for the entire kit, minus the uh, room mic uh, going to the aux one track. And here's where I can apply uh, some reverb um, and compression maybe uh, to the entire drum kit and uh, kind of gel it all together. So let's listen to this um, tr aux track. And right now there's nothing on it. I could also EQ the entire kit a little more if I wanted to. And this is what I'll use to blend in with the uh, tracks themselves. I'm gonna put a little compression on this. And 
Now I'm gonna use the uh, reverb space designer to add a little space to it all. And defaults are huge, way too much reverb. Um, I'm gonna go into the small spaces reverb and check out some of these uh, plate reverbs. Um, the drum plate is usually pretty good. Okay, so that's a little bit too much 80s, but if we bring down the uh, reverb amount, you can kind of mix in a nice, nice blend that's not too over the top. And again, we're going to be using this aux track anyway, just to kind of add a little bit, um, a little bit of extra reverb to the drums if we need it. Um, and if we compare this to the room, you can hear it's the aux track's a little brighter. Um, it's not a natural reverb like the room sound is. So it's nice having these two options to kind of play with and blend them in. And if we listen to everything. Chorus or something, or if I you know want to liven up tracks. All right, cool. So now we're gonna listen to the entire mix. And make some fine adjustments. Shaker's a little loud. A little quick djembe. And then what I typically like to do on the uh, output is uh, add some more compression on the entire mix. And I really like the Platinum Analog uh, plugin here. Platinum Analog tape, that is. It's got a nice, punchy, warm sound to it. And again, we're going to want to keep an eye on our meter. It's, it's peaking pretty hard in the red. Um, I'm also going to put an adaptive limiter on it to kind of bring up the overall volume. And I'm going to back off on the output gain of the compressor so that our output meter isn't buried. So there we go. That's our complete mix. So now if we go back to the unmixed version, we can kind of compare and contrast. So here's the unmixed one. Wow. And going to the mixed version. So that's it. Thanks for uh, sticking around for this longer tutorial. Um, I hope you guys learned something. And if you have any uh, comments or questions, definitely uh, feel free to leave a note on the blog or on YouTube um, or on Facebook. Uh, I'll be posting the video up there. So uh, thanks again, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.